see this 97 Grand Dam has developed a coolant leak. You see a drop of it. Several of them just rolled off right there. But it's been leaking for a while and it's very difficult to pinpoint. So I'm doing an investigation here via video. So in this area of this water outlet here, what I found is that there's a wet spot on the side of the engine underneath it. So I'm suspicious of this outlet. So what we're going to do here is unplug this connector here, unplug another connector underneath it, and then remove this air inlet uh, hose here so we can have a better look underneath there. Okay, so let's get some of this wiring out of the way. Here's one plug. This one goes to the spark plugs. And another one that's in the way here is right here between the banks. So we'll get that out of the way. And we also need to get this air duct out of the way because it's blocking our view really and ability to see what's going on down there on that uh, water outlet part that I'm suspicious of. Okay, I'll take this air intake and move it out of the way. Okay, so I set some light up underneath here. Have a look. It's coming out of the bottom of this outlet assembly. See how wet it is here. Apparently getting onto this tubing. tubing here and traveling on down the side of the front of the engine here or back of the engine. Pretty serious leak but we're going to go at this and take this assembly out. We have to drain the coolant and then take that out and uh, replace the gasket in there at the very least possibly replacing that outlet assembly as well. Okay. We're going to uh, remove the lower radiator hose here to get the, drain the radiator. I could find no petcock on this, and usually these things are jammed up and won't open up anyway. The quickest way to get the most of the fluid out in a hurry is lower radiator hose. I'll put a, I'll put a screw type clamp on here. Now this hose is going to tend to be stuck on there. Okay, now we've got a, a pair of channel lock pliers here to break this hose loose. It's going to be stuck on here. Just like that. And now, it still isn't going to be real, real easy to pull off. Get the drift. Okay, now that we've drained out pretty much everything we can get out of there, we'll put a different clamp on. I prefer the screw type clamp, just a lot easier to work with. Okay, we'll just tighten that up and then move on to the next step. Okay. So now we're working on undoing the heater hose from the water outlet. Once again, we've got one of these handy spring clamps. And generally, you've got to just kind of work it over. I like to use the vice grip, but I can't quite get it open enough from this angle. I have to get. Sometimes what you have to do is get yet another wrench and then turn it. Turn the vice grip with this. Okay, looks like we're finally over the hump there. We're gonna have to get in there with a 
with the channel lock pliers and break the seal on it. Okay, I had to use a smaller size vice grip to get around this clamp here. And now I'm going to have to use my small channel lock pliers to tighten the vice grip further. Looks like we need it even further tightened up. This is one of these ergonomically incorrect positions. I do have my elbow though on the car here so it doesn't strain my back. Okay, better broke loose. Let's see if we can get this hose off. Pull it over there been in that position for so long it's not going to be it's going to be reluctant what I did on the other one is used a blow dryer as it is winter here I'm working in the order of uh, 20 degrees 15 20 degrees here in this garage I'm going to have to heat that up too Okay, I heated that up for about a minute. Let's see what difference that makes. And it makes a huge difference. There it comes. Hey, nothing came out of there. Okay, there's only one line left in this water outlet now, going back to the overflow tank. We're going to just try and see if we can get this out of here without having to remove that. You need to just pull it off toward the front of the engine. Okay, so we get that one loosened up. There's another one underneath that's more of a challenge to get to. Okay, so from underneath, see this? We've got just a quarter inch drive on here. 10 millimeter of course. There. Got it started. I'll get a little wider view here. See where I'm working. And there's the, there's the uh, power steering pump. So we're underneath there. We're fitting through. So now we'll just take those two off. Okay. So I'm going to get the last of this, this last 10 millimeter uh, bolt off of here. It's holding this water outlet. Okay, so with that off, it looks like we're going to have to take off this one right here to the 10 millimeter holding this metal tubing which actually goes all the way back follow it that's it there it winds up running back right there to the overflow bottle so when it gets a, high, a really high level in overflow it feeds it back this way back into the water flow so we're going to take that 10 mil off Okay, finishing that off. Now we can uh, see. Now we got a little flexibility here. Now maybe we can pull this, 
pull that water out with that, that tubing. Okay, so we managed to pull this off without taking any further disassembly. So here's our water outlet. So here you can see, as we get down in there, the gasket, which is really more like a little rubber seal. Okay, so we can see what happened here. This is the replacement part. The piece uh, on the end here, you can see it right here, it's deteriorated and the seal actually fits on that piece and that's why it looked like the seal was separated it was just sitting there by itself because this had come apart from the uh, main body so I have a replacement part here picked it up at Advance Auto